right guys, on this episode, we've got something a little bit different today. So a good mate of mine, Danny, has been doing a bit of a project of his own for some time. Um, I haven't had much to do with this car at all, but this is something he's getting real close to with the, the body and the driveline side of things. He's getting really close for engineering. So today he's brought it down to a truck yard and he's gonna give it a bit of a drive. So we'll, uh, without further talking, we'll spin the camera around and we'll meet Danny and we can talk about what he's been playing with. Danny, what are we playing with here and what are we, uh, what are we doing? So HQ Bonaro, um, I bought it back in 2015. Uh, I wanted a, a car to tinker with back then, sort of we used to have a Ford and I had that for 18 odd years so I wanted another car to replace that. Uh, I wanted like something that took me back to the 90s when I grew up, old school tough streeter from the 90s, you know, big angry car, big solid roller, tubs, etc, etc. This popped up on Facebook. End up going over to Melbourne to grab it, brought it back. I'd always planned to just do a motor and tubs, and then sort of that was it. As always, things change along the way. And um, I wanted to touch up this section, touch up that section, touch up a few sections here and there, add a bonnet for the new motor, whatever I decided to do at the time. Before I knew it, it was basically out of full wheel spray. So I thought, fuck it, might as well go the whole hog, do it properly, stripped it right down. Within six months of buying, I basically had it stripped apart like a Meccano set. And um, here we are. <laughs> Never planned to go this far, but as the worst things change, so. Yep. And as, as you can see, obviously, you've since you're owning the car, you've had it tubbed as well. Yeah, so I took it to CDS Engineering. Um, I was real happy with that. Those boys did an awesome job. Um, all coilovers, front and rear, 1510 deep dish, um, any roll bar, all the adjustable arms, time joints and everything, and uh, raised the boot floor. And you can see the tubs in there. Did roll cage connectors if I ever want to add a roll cage. I don't have to do new fab, I can just connect it through the parcel shelf. Yeah. Raised boot floor so the, the exhaust goes over the diff, not under the diff, so everything's all neat and tidy. End up sourcing a big block for it. And um, yeah, it's just been eight years so far, it's getting, getting closer, so yeah. So when you bought the car, was it good? Was it bad? What was in The car was a good cruiser. It was definitely no show car. It was just a mild alloy headed 350. Um, had the send lines on it. I kind of fell in love with the way it looked. It was a Barbados GDS with the blackouts and everything. The send lines just pulled me in because it takes me back to the 90s, you know, where I grew up looking at these cars as a kid, as a teenager. So I kind of fell in love with the way it looked and I've kind of ret ret retained that theme right up until now. So yeah, it was, it, was a, it was just a tidy cruiser. It was nothing special. I pulled the Thrifty out straight away and then, uh, yeah, pulled it apart and just went from there. Got the big block for it a few years after buying it. It's now a big block solid roller in it. 565 cube, um, all the goodies, Turbo 400, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah. While we're talking about the engine, we may as well pop the bonnet and talk about yeah, that sure. before we get into getting it off the trailer. So engine-wise, big block Chev. Yeah, so it's a Dart Big M, 565 cubes, sod roller, Jessel valve, uh, Jessel uh, belt drive, all crane girdle in the valve train. Um, Scat crank, H beam rods and um, forged pistons, all, all the usual goodies, Brodix heads, and um, yeah, made a made it nearly 800 on the engine dyno because I put it on the dyno before, I, like when I bought it, to make sure everything was all good before I put it in the car. Yeah, just off the shelf pipes. Whole exhaust back is all handmade, polished stainless though, all fabricated up by Dan Lake. He's awesome. He did a really fantastic job of that. Real happy with that. And it's pump fuel, isn't it, as well? Pump, pump 98. Um, I could go to E85 later on down the track, but just for now, pump 98, just to get the car on the road, get it running, and then maybe down the track I'll look at E85, but for, for, the, for the time being, it's pump 98. And it's user friendly as well. Yeah. You know, fill up anywhere. Big Ron, radiator. Yeah, the Ron Davies imported from America. Definitely keeps it cool. United Speed Shop components yeah, as well. Yeah, so I've done the tubular arms from United Speed Shop with the coilover, double adjustable coilover at the front. Um, I bought that basically straight away when they first released the kit. I got pretty excited, bought that straight away. I've got the retro rack billet power steering for it. So it's got a lot of billet uh, power steering on it as well, all retro rack. And um, yeah, all hoses, all handmade and uh, everything all sort of done. ABD carb, 1050 from Race Max Direct. 
Um, I haven't really changed much of the motor. I did change the manifold because it come with a Brodix manifold. And my engine builder who I deal with all the time, I noticed the manifold, the ports didn't match the gasket. So I spoke to my engine builder about port matching the manifold. He goes, that pretty old manifold, start fresh, get it out of block and out the box, it'll already flow better. So we did that, but he's already ported that one as well. So I did change the manifold, had it all smoothed back and then two packed, a bit like your Tirana. You can, <laughs> That's where I got the idea for that from, got inspiration from that. And uh, yeah, did, did the APD carb and MSD Pro billet. Looks good. And you were saying as well, you're probably going to change the colour of the block for now, it's just sitting Yeah, there. so at the moment, the motor's just been bolted in, because as you can see, it's just the dummy fit stage. So yeah. I didn't want to be cutting, drilling, and modifying and changing shit once the car had brand new fresh paint. So we basically built the whole car and got it running and driving, wired up and everything, before actually painting it. Yeah. Now when it goes back together for final assembly after paint, everything should just, it'd be easy. Yeah, best way to do it, I think. Yeah. So as he was saying, he's literally had this whole car plumbed front to back, uh, trans lines, fuel lines, everything. Yeah, yeah. It's been wired up recently, had the car's been sent off, uh, had the wiring done. So he's only just really got the car back. Um, and now he's in the stages of the car, it runs, drives, brakes, everything works but it's obviously got no glass, no hanging panels, like the boot, the doors are off it, so it's easy to get in and out of, and yeah. Everything working, it's got all the auto meter dash, custom layout he's had done. Something obviously he liked with some billet buttons and nice. And you're gonna keep the color the yeah, same, so. I'm torn. I'm torn between Barbados, how it was when I first got it with the blackouts. Really suits coupes that colour, I think. I used to have a four-door HQ GDS a couple of years ago that was cyan blue, and that had white stripes, and yeah, that looked good, but I think that suits the four-door more, so I'm probably going to swing towards the Barbados. It would definitely look good. Yeah. I think no matter what colour you paint it, it's already got the stance, the wheels, the engine, it's going to yeah. look good no matter what colour you do it. Yeah, I was happy with how the stance, the boys nailed that at CDS, they got the rear end exactly how I wanted it. Yeah. Still want to come up in the front just a little bit, um, we're still tickering with the, the stub axles on that, I've got the Rod Tech stub axles in it, and it's hard just to get the height we want at the front, so I'm probably going to end up reverting back to actually the factory uh, drop spot, um, stub axles. Yeah, so then, it's got a drop spindle in it at the yeah, moment. Yeah, it's got, it's got the Rod Hatfield drop spindles in it. I did them not because I wanted to lower the car, but I wanted to retain full suspension travel while lowering it. But the geometry of it hasn't quite worked out with the United Speed Shop front end, so I'm going to go back to standard stub axles and then I'll be able to get the exact height I want it, and it will still ride mint. Yeah. Done the bullet billet hinges, they, don't, they no longer make them. So, I've got them, I'm mates with the guys down there, known all them for years. One of the guys that works there is actually my engine builder, so. And then obviously after you have finished, the car's going to go to get engineered soon. Yeah, so today I just wanted to do some testing, run it through the gears, run it through the paces, just here at my work, get some heat into it, make sure everything's all good, make sure there's no more leaks, make sure that nothing else has to be changed. And um, yeah, the next step from here is over to engineering with SOT at Speed Garage MVE. He'll do a torsion test, he did say to me, look, before you get it painted, before it goes for final assembly, bring it to me. We'll do the torsion test while it's in this stage. Then that's out of the way. And then it'll be final strip down. Pull the wiring back out of it, pull all the plumbing back out of it, motor trans diff all back out of it, wheels off, suspension out, because everything back to literally a bare shell. And this, this body shell, as you were saying before, it's already been dipped as well, wasn't yeah, sandblasted? Yeah, so when I bought the car, as I say, I, there were so many areas I wanted to touch up, I decided just to go for a full respray. But then you get the dilemma of, alright, if you're going to do a full respray, you might as well go bare metal to do it properly. So I spent about six months to a year, like, solidly researching which way to go about it. And for me, there's many different options, there's many different opinions, but for me, with the situation I got and what I wanted, I dipped it. We've got minus paint here in Adelaide. So I dipped the whole shell, and that's why it's back to a clean sort of slate. And yeah, so that's, that's just how I went about it. So yeah, the whole shell's been dipped, all the hanging panels have been dipped, boot, doors, all been dipped. And for HQ Coupe, it's probably one of the better shells. Yeah, so I was, as you can imagine, I was, I was really worried about how it was going to come out of the tank. Frank, who owned it, Minus Paint's been sold since then, but Frank at the time he did it, he rang me and they actually said, he said it was probably the best coupe he'd ever done at that time. And you just don't know what you're going to get into. Yeah, you, do you don't. You don't know if it's going to be chicken wire or a basket case. I was, I was fretting. I had a few sleepless nights, let me tell you. 
but it, I, was, I was quite pleasantly surprised. And once the car gets pulled apart from here, where's it gonna to go to get all the paint and panel? So I've been chatting to Adam at Southern Classics for years. You know, I've been dealing with him a few, with a few of my other cars and I'm very happy to, uh, you know, move forward with him. So he'll get the car, hopefully, fingers crossed, by the end of this year, and then the paint and panel process starts. Yeah, I must say, myself, in terms of people in Adelaide for paint and panel work, Southern Classics and Customs down south are probably one of the best in the state. They do excellent work and some really high quality cars as yeah. well. So yeah. I don't think you have any troubles taking it down to them guys. And just as a person, Adam's just a great dude. Yeah. He's just a great dude to deal with. He's real easy going, he's chill, he's just a real good dude. It's hard to find someone as well that you, I think you trust and then you've seen their, their quality of work and you go, right, they, they can do the standard that I want as well, yeah. which is good. Yeah. And obviously it's not going to be no show car, but at the same time it's going to be like an elite street car, you'd street call elite. it. Street yeah. elite. A bit like what your LC is, you know. Not that good then. <laughs> <laughs> do some Ks, put it in a show and shine here and there, take it to someone else. And interior wise, you're going to keep within yeah, a theme so of the car? I'm sticking, I'm sticking with the GDS theme, so the Houndstooth. Um, yeah. I've done a lot of console just because I wanted the armrest and I wanted the B&M shifter, all, you know, all look factory, my automatic gauges. I'll end up doing this with the fish scale. Yep. So I won't leave that raw, I'll do a fish scale in there. Like new the dash. factory background was? Yeah, like they were from factory. And then I'll get a new dash from Dash Original, but I'll have the vent delete done. Yeah. So there'll be no vents because I don't need that. I'm not going to be running around with aircon. So <laughs> back seats being modified to suit the tubs. Yeah, chassis connectors. Everything all done. Haven't even had to change the floor pan. The floor pan's all come up mint. Yeah, it's like, in pretty good news. Yeah, I was very, very surprised. Very good. Even the quarters, when I first bought it, I was a little bit worried about how the paint was and how much filler there was, but the factory swage lines are still there perfectly. And yeah, even in the sunlight, it's quite good. Yeah, we haven't touched, so I haven't done any bodywork at this point yet, like none. This is basically how you see it, is how it came out the dip. I think and I noticed you had, like, they've modified the arches a little yeah. bit just for clearancing Correct. wise for the 325s. Yeah, and they're swimming in there. There's yeah. heaps of room in there on the inside as well. So I've got my 20 mil either side as per engineering specs. So moving forward with the car, what are your goals in the future for this car? My main goal is just to get it finished. <laughs> <laughs> nah, look, I, uh, I had a Ford for 18 years and that Ford kind of got fairly well known in the Adelaide scene, just in magazines, it was always on the street, you know. Um, I'd like to replicate that, just have a car that's, get it in a magazine, take it to a show, win a couple of trophies, take it to Summon Outs, you know. I'd love to get it in the Elite, in the elite Hall at Summon Outs, I would love to do that. I've been going to Summon Outs basically all my adult life. Take off the bucket list. Item. Yeah, definitely. If I can get this in the Elite Hall at Summonats, I'll be a very happy camper. And yeah, so basically just finish it, hit a few shows with it for the first year or two. And then once that's done, I do want to actually race it, you know, get it up. We've got the new Tail and Bend track now, so we're very blessed in that department. We've got a world-class facility now that we can actually race our cars at. So it'd be nice to also, you know, get a few trophies in the cabinet, have it on display a few times, and actually get it to the track and actually use it. And if, if I can run a nine, even if it's a 999, but in full street trim, that'd yeah. be that'd be awesome. And then just get in it, enjoy it, cruise yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we could. All right. Well, enough talk, and let's get this thing off the trailer and let's uh, do it. take it for a drive. What do you reckon? Let's do it. All right. <laughs>
brakes work. <laughs> That'd be the first time that like the rotors have been glazed up. Yeah. Probably want to bed them in a bit. There goes that window, I reckon. <laughs> Straps up. <laughs>
left the yard, Danny had a good chance there to go up and down, give the car a bit of a squirt, run it through its paces, see if it would get hot or anything like that. Uh, runs really cool, which is good, um, and no leaks, which is even better. So it was just a good chance for him to get the car out of the shed and uh, obviously be able to drive it without having to take it out onto the road. Obviously it's not registered or close to being drivable, so um, luckily being given the facilities there down at the truck depot to do that. And um, now it's off towards getting the uh, engineering side of things done and then you can move towards taking it back to Corrin's at Cos Automotive where they will pull apart all the work that he's been doing and uh, they can get into taking it to get the paint panel done down at Southern Classics. Um, I can't wait to see it. If it comes out in that lime green, I think it'll look really tough. So he's done good. Um, just wanted to say thanks for all tuning in. Um, we'll wrap the video up here. And uh, if you haven't already, like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we've got plenty more content coming your way. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you all on the next one. Cheers.